very well. The last thing that I'm going to talk about uh, in this class, in this semester, is oncology rehabilitation. Uh, now, let's define briefly what exactly cancer is. Cancer is also called neoplasm and is an uncontrolled division of abnormal cells. Um, sometimes this can be very aggressive, very fast growing, uh, and they invade adjacent tissues. That's where the name cancer comes from, or they can grow by metastasizing, that is spreading through the blood or lymph. Here we have this radiograph, and you can certainly see the unusual destruction of the proximal humerus. However, uh, one thing that I think is important to also notice is if you look over at the radius, you can see the epiphyseal plate. Uh, and this is an interesting thing about bone cancers. Bone cancers primary bone cancers, the ones that start in the bone, are mainly the domain of adolescents uh, and older children because their bones are growing and have a high turnover rate. So the American Cancer Society divides uh, different types of cancers into five types. Uh, carcinoma comes from the epithelial cells. Uh, sarcoma uh, can include bone, muscle, uh, collagenous tissue and blood vessels, uh, leukemia, where the primary source is blood forming tissues, uh, lymphoma or myeloma, where the primary source uh, are immune tissues, and central nervous system tumor. Here we see uh, a list of the most common type of cancers. Uh, now, an interesting thing is that based upon all the uh, press and all the support, you might think that breast cancer is the most common type. Uh, it's close to it. It's the second most common type. Uh, the most common type of cancer actually is lung cancer. And the reason for the difference in press and support, uh, both uh, lay support and government support, so far as medical research, uh, is because lung cancer is, as we'll see on the next slide, way more lethal than breast cancer is. So one of the reasons that breast cancer has so much more support is that there are way more survivors of breast cancer uh, to advocate for patients with the disease compared to patients with lung cancer. Here we see the five-year survival rates of the top few most common types of cancer. Uh, prostate is the most survivable, uh, probably because most types are fairly slow growing and well encapsulated within the prostate gland. Uh, breast cancer has a survival rate, a five-year survival rate of almost 90 percent. Uh, probably part of that is although the treatment of breast cancer is very rigorous and difficult, the medical community has become very good at treating breast cancer. Uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma, the non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, uh, the five-year survival rate goes down to about two-thirds for colorectal cancer, uh, becomes more ominous with cancer of the stomach, and as you can see, the five-year survival rate for lung cancer is only 13%. As a physical therapist, working with patients with cancer is not rare or all that new. I did it early in my career, over 30 years ago. If you are going to be working with this patient population, there's some things that are unique uh, to patients depending upon what type of problem they have, but there are some problems that are common uh, through most of the patients with cancer. Uh, one of them is treatment through chemotherapy. Chemotherapy is the administration of cytotoxic agents. Uh, the basic mechanism is that the cancer cells are way more sensitive to these agents than the healthy cells are because their, metal their metabolism is so high. So the cytotoxic agents will kill the cancer cells while just making the cells that we actually want to survive rather sick. Most people are familiar with the loss of hair due to chemotherapy because of the effects on the hair follicle cells but more important probably for the health of the patient are severe immunosuppression uh, and anemia frequently due to suppression of the tissues that uh, will form red blood cells. Another common treatment for cancer is radiation therapy. Uh, 
uh, with radiation, the mitosis of cells are impaired, uh, and especially the reproduction of cancer cells. Without the ability to reproduce, the tumors will shrink. Um, this is most commonly administered through an external beam of radiation, which is what's portrayed on the picture to the right, uh, but sometimes also small radioactive objects are implanted percutaneously uh, into a patient either in or near a tumor uh, to have the same effects. That's called brachiotherapy. Uh, while those objects are in the patient, the patient is actually radioactive and needs to be isolated. Uh, the radiation of the objects dissipates with the half-life of the radiation or is removed after the treatment so that the patients can again rejoin uh, their community, uh, their family, and their occupation. Uh, one more type of Radiation treatment is called systemic radiation, where a radioactive chemical is administered either orally or through the IV. Um, one of the effects of radiation is immediate fatigue. So if you're working with inpatients, uh, then you definitely want to see those patients before radiation because they won't be able to cooperate uh, with you very much after the radiation. But a really interesting um, type of side effect that the patients have is inflammation of tissues. Uh, and this causes a late side effect in some cases of increased stiffness of skin and connective tissue due to post-inflammatory fibrosis. Once earlier in my career, I saw a patient, actually a young woman, who had had a lumpectomy and then radiation uh, for a treatment of breast cancer and had frozen shoulder because of it. As a physical therapist who is treating patients with cancer, uh, some of the problems that you may work with will be unique depending upon the problem. Uh, as I mentioned before, I believe, uh, primary bone cancers, uh, which are mainly osteosarcoma or Ewing sarcoma, uh, are quite rare uh, overall, but they're actually fairly common so far as childhood cancers. 5% of all childhood cancers are bone cancers. Uh, and here we see a patient. Uh, this girl is, I believe, at the time of this picture, about 13 years old, uh, who had had a rotation plasty. Uh, it's called as a treatment for osteosarcoma. Uh, the interesting thing about osteosarcomas or Ewing sarcomas is that almost 50% of them are at the knee, uh, either the distal femur or the proximal tibia, uh, which makes sense because those are the longest bones in the body, so the turnover of cells at those epiphyseal plates would be the greatest. The treatment is actually kind of wild, like you see, they have taken uh, the proximal tibia and the distal femur out and grafted the tibia onto the femur. They've actually also grafted the quadriceps into the Achilles tendon uh, and the hamstrings into the dorsiflexors. So if, uh, if with a person who has had this procedure, plantar and dorsiflexion of the foot is monstrously strong because the muscles are so much bigger than the muscles that were doing this before. Uh, so what happens in a patient like this is that they have a very nice weight-bearing surface uh, to take their body weight within the prosthesis of the actual anatomical heel, uh, and they operate flexion and extension of the prosthetic knee uh, through dorsi and plantar flexion of the foot. So if you're working with a patient like this girl, then you would be working with the problem of prosthetic training. Uh, another unique problem is pelvic floor therapy, such as you thought about with Crystal a couple weeks ago, or about half of you had thought about uh, and studied very thoroughly with Dr. Curran uh, last semester. 
pelvic floor therapy is frequently needed uh, with cancer of the genital, uro, the genital urinary or reproductive systems. If you are working with patients who are recovering from breast cancer, frequently shoulder problems uh, might be what you're working with uh, to help these patients. Shoulder impairment uh, as a result of treatment of breast cancer is common. Uh, in the past, radical mastectomies were more common. In a radical, a radical mastectomy, the pectoralis major was incised in order to get all the cancerous material. These are now rather rare uh, due to improved detection. Um, however, one thing that still may be a problem with uh, women mainly who have had mastectomy is disuse atrophy and stiffness uh, of the shoulder and the shoulder muscles in the, while the incisions in the pectoral area are healing. Uh, and as we discussed a little bit earlier, uh, radiation can cause, actually radiation uh, almost always causes inflammation and that inflammation sometimes causes late fibrosis uh, of muscles and tissues, which can cause severe stiffness, uh, sometimes quite a bit after the radiation therapy is finished. Remember that we were describing before how metastases uh, travel in the lymphatics or in the bloodstream. Uh, so with certain types of cancers, and especially remember breast cancer is the second most common type, uh, that uh, not only uh, the breast tissue is removed, but also uh, lymph nodes and other lymphatics. Further, the vessels uh, may be occluded because of the fibrosis that can occur with radiation. Uh, the result can be lymphedema. So lymphedema therapy uh, is frequently something that these patients will need help with uh, because of the treatment. Again, since breast cancer is the most common, it's most commonly a problem for the upper extremity and hand, although sometimes can be a problem with the lower extremity uh, with some cancers of the male reproductive system, such as uh, testicular cancer or prostate cancer, in which the inguinal lymph nodes are removed. With central nervous system tumors, uh, the impairment will depend upon the size and location of the tumor. Uh, here we see an MRI of a tumor that is very deep, uh, and it would be very hard to resect a tumor like that without causing quite a bit of collateral damage. Sometimes tumors are operable, uh, and frequently tumors uh, are susceptible to radiation, at least in the short term. Treatment of central nervous system tumors can uh, give patients really greatly improved quality of life and function for a while. Uh, however, the as you see on the final bullet point, the five-year survival rate for central nervous system uh, neoplasm uh, is only about a third and that varies widely depending upon the type of neoplasm. As a therapist working with patients recovering from cancer, one type of problem that will be very common is helping patients with cancer-related fatigue, a syndrome that is very common, as you see, in which the patients will need help with strengthening and conditioning both during treatment and after treatment. Chemotherapy frequently causes neuropathy, uh, and we as therapists can help these patients uh, through electrotherapeutic modalities to help with pain. Also, if pain is unilateral, a mirror therapy uh, has been shown to be very helpful. Uh, if you haven't heard of mirror therapy, you can kind of see what's going on with a picture on the right in which a patient will observe uh, the reflection uh, of an unimpaired limb such that it looks like the impaired limb. Apparently, the mirror therapy works through central processing. Uh, uh, another problem that patients frequently face due to chemotherapy-induced uh, neuropathy is poor sensation of the feet, 
which can contribute to poor balance and falls. Uh, finally, as a physical therapist, you may be working with helping to decrease disability and pain in patients at the end of their life. Although physical therapist helping patients with cancer has been around for a long time and not uncommon, uh, certification of specialists in treating patients with cancer is a new specialization just recognized last year. Please review the summaries of points uh, that are important uh, in thinking about this introduction to oncology rehabilitation from the perspective of physical therapy. And if you work with these patients, you will be helping people a great deal, and I'm certain will have a very rewarding experience.